you're only two steps away from your life completely falling apart. And I'm not saying this to try and hook you and scare you, okay? I'm trying to trying to empower you. And let me dive into what I'm talking about, all right? Hey, creators, Eamon here. And this is where I help you master your creative mindset. So this is actually relieving if you grasp this concept because if you realize you're only one or two steps away from your life completely falling apart, then you can do a lot to actually fix it or prevent that, right? And I've realized this a couple of times. You know, it's so funny you think that everything's on track and your life's all together and everything feels great and then one thing happens. You lose a job, you lose a partner, you know, fracture your wrist, for example. Happened to me last year, just doing something stupid. You know, a holiday being cancelled, COVID, for example. You think that you have everything together, but very quickly you realize that it only takes one or two minor or medium or major things to happen for you to have the perception that you have no control of your life. See, this is where you're at right now. You think that you have this control of your life, and that makes you feel calm and relaxed, but you actually have no control. And when you realize that, all the power is in your hands because you can focus on the things you actually can control because you can't control other people's reactions. You can't control what other people say or do to you. You can't control a lot of the things in the world, most of the things in the world. You can control your reactions. You can control how you show up and you can control what else? What you create. That's what we're about here at Creative Philosophy. I'm sorry about that crow. If it's annoying, I'll try and edit it out with some magic. But when you realize you're so out of control and it only takes one event for you to feel like everything's falling apart, you know, you don't, you don't want to be in that situation because it really sucks when you are in that situation. So if you can do everything you can to prevent that, then if and when it comes, you can witness it and be separate from it and disidentify from it because you know that this thing was coming. And this is something that I'm really focused on in the last year or two years and has been actually effective because I've been implementing some things to ensure that it's effective. And that is to disidentify from the outcome. That's right. We got you. We're talking about ego once again, all right? Because ego is kind of like the, the thing that's in control of your life, okay? So how do you realize that? that the ego is in control of your life and that you can't actually disidentify from the outcome because everything that you have is built on identity. Everything that every person in your life, every activity that you have, everything that you own, you are identified with. And I'm telling you now that if you want to feel like you are in control when you realize you're actually out of control is that the key is to disidentify with everything, not be identified to the outcome. So for example, you just started dating a new person. You're not sure where it's going to go, but you really like them. Hopefully they like you back. Oh my God, what's going to happen? I'm not sure. What can I do to make sure? No, just let it all go because that's actually going to bring you the outcome that you do want. At any point, one of your relatives, close relatives or family or friends could get cancer and it could be all over for them. But if you're disidentified from that outcome, which is the hardest thing to do, because that's a scenario that you have absolutely zero control over. If someone just decides they don't like you anymore and they tell you, and you're like, ah, that sucks, but all good, you're still alive. But then all of a sudden, if someone is dying close to you, that's a totally different thing. Because how do you just disidentify from the outcome? Super, super easy to say, but not really hard to do. Uh, But really hard to do, sorry. But one way that works for me is that If you realize that that could happen at any moment, all the time, and you're witnessing the present all the time, then when you are with every person, for some reason, I've just got this intrusive thought that keeps hitting me all the time, that it's like, oh, you could get in your car and die today. And as annoying as that intrusive thought is, it also brings me a lot of gratitude because it forces me into the present moment and allows me to go, oh, you know what? I appreciate existing today. Every interaction that you have with someone that you appreciate existing. Make a point to appreciate it and enjoy it and even let them know if you can because that changes relationship dynamics a lot as well and people don't do that stuff. Hey, I really enjoyed spending today with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it and I can't wait to see you again. Even if it's just your male friend, if it's just a bro, they might be like, oh yeah, whatever, but then go away and be like, damn, 
Amos is one of my best friends. He says that kind of thing and nobody else says that kind of thing. Because you have to be bold to say that kind of thing. But the way you're going to say that kind of thing is because you actually appreciate the moment all the time. And that's because you're hyper aware of the fact that anything at any time can be ripped away from you. And when you know that, it's as I'm saying, it's so empowering. So it's, it's a hard concept to communicate. But what else can you do to disidentify from the outcome? Because again, what we're talking about here is that at any point, one thing can be ripped away from you and you're going to feel like you're out of control. So everything that you are in control of, at least for me, I'm just trying to do everything I can to ensure that I'm doing it all to the best of my ability. Oh, my body could fall apart and I could get cancer myself. Okay, cool. Well, I want to eat as healthy as I possibly can. I want to exercise every single day. I try and get seven to 8,000 steps in. I'm glad that I have a physical job running around shooting properties all day. I run a media company, if you didn't know. And they're the variables that I can control to ensure that maybe I don't get cancer, but maybe I will. Maybe I have it right now and I don't know, okay? What else can you do to, you know, just ask yourself the question, what can I do to actually control everything that is in my control? And then the other question you can ask is, what actually is not in my control? What do I think is in my control, but isn't actually in my control? Because again, the, the word that I use to describe ego all the time is just slippery. Because it's so slippery. It convinces you that you are in control, for example. It convinces you that the, the relationship with that new girl that you're seeing is going to work out and be amazing forever. Or it convinces you that nobody in your life is going to get cancer. Nobody's going to be killed in a car accident. Okay, But these things happen to people all the time. And if your ego has convinced you, because you are not your ego, if it, it has convinced you that you are in control of these scenarios and then it's ripped away from you, that's when it hurts. But if you're disidentified from the outcome and you realize that that's not my identity. And the key to all of this, i found, is to be grounded in your own values. So if you can figure out what exactly your key values are, then... You write them down and then you refer to them almost every day. I've got a reminder at 8.45 p.m. every night. Just as I'm getting into bed, getting all cozy, reminds me, it asks me a couple of different questions. And I got this from a Stoicism book, actually. Marcus Aurelius used to do this. Just ask me four different questions about my day as to, you know, and one of them is to reflect on my values. And so my core values are creativity, mindfulness, and discipline. They're my three. And I've got those written down. And I give myself a rating for all three of them every single night. And I go, oh, you did 8.5 there. Oh, actually. And I'll tell you today, mindfulness is going pretty good. But discipline, you know, it's gone, it's gone medium. I'll say that. It's not the best I've ever had. Okay. Had an extra coffee today. I don't like doing that because then I feel a little bit jittery. And then that ripples onto other bad habits. And I don't like doing that. But if you're able to be grounded in your values so much so that you can reflect on them every single evening, then you're going to be disidentified with less things. With more things, you're not going to identify with as many things. So I've got these two statues here. One's a possum, one's a koala, and they're just staring me in the face right now. I should have filmed this way. Maybe next episode. But yeah, this topic was probably not what you expected. Honestly, it wasn't what I was expecting either. Didn't have a definite plan for what I was going to chat about today. But if you can realize that, yeah, you are not that far away from your life, feeling like it's completely crumbling. And zooming back from that, that's because you feel like you're in control of everything. But if you can realize you're not actually in control of a lot of things, if not most things, and then you zoom out from that and you go, what can I control? And these are the things that I can control. Okay, these are the things that I can implement to ensure that I can maximize the control over the outcomes that I can control. And then you zoom out from that, and you're grounded in your values and you reflect on your values each day, then when the time comes and that hard thing happens, it's going to be much easier to be like, that's okay, because I am my own person. I'm grounded in my own values. I know where I stand and I am aware of my own value without that thing in my life. And it's a, it's a tough biscuit to swallow. Is that the analogy? I'm not sure. In fact, I'm almost certain it's not. Is it cookie? 
it's a tough something to swallow. Pill? Pill. That's it. Especially when it's something really serious. But if you can practice it with small things, like a client cancelled that one shoot on me today. Damn, that sucks. What could I have done to prevent that? But you know what? It's okay. I'm not identified with the outcome. I'm going to be fine if that client never books with me again or just doesn't rebook that shoot in. Because I'm not identified with the outcome because I have all of my value outside of that. Anyway, hopefully you've gotten some value out of this video. I didn't really touch on create creativity as much, but if you're a creative person, then this is all very relevant to you because your ego is probably stronger than the average person and it's a blessing and a curse, my dude. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.